Flight out, status check. Return go or no go for launch. Flight out is go. Oh, it's time to go. RSO, range is green. Go flight. All flight and range ops are go. Locking in for terminal count. Hold on. Hello? Hold on. All right. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is ridiculous. Thank you all for the patience. I was late, and then I had no audio, and now we're here. What's that song? Started from the no audio, and now we're here. It's something like that. Um, let me just turn this up so we can see what's going on. Hi everyone, does anyone know what's going on today? Has anyone read the title? Oh my goodness, there are a lot of people here. Please don't judge too hard. Um, here's the thing. I am unsure of the effectiveness that we will be able to demonstrate with these thrusters today. Um, the reason that this stream was delayed, I, I suppose I should do better, a better introduction for those who have uh, joined us. My name is Joe Barnard, I run this channel, and this is a reaction-controlled model rocket, um, which means that we have these tiny little cold gas thrusters up at the top of the vehicle, and the idea is that when, <laughs> when, these, gas thrusters, when these gas thrusters fire, they go psh, psh, and they can point the vehicle in different directions. So if you want full control over your rocket, at least in terms of orientation, you want what we can refer to as pitch and yaw, and finally, Roll. So that is what we are here to do today. That is the roll testing. Um, this rig that I have set up, boy, I'm nervous. Um, th this rig that I have set up right now is slightly suboptimal, so I'm going to spend just a moment's time here fixing things and making them a little bit better. Um, basically, what we've got is um, I've tried to, uh, I've hung a string from a microphone stand. Thank you, Berkeley. Um, it's not Berkeley stand, but like, thanks for the music education. Um, I'm going to hang this rocket from a micro st microphone stand, and then we are just going to let it rotate about its Z axis. You can call it whatever. I think traditionally it's like more like the X axis. But um, we're going to let it roll about this axis. It's fairly centered. Um, this is obviously not a perfect approach. There are a lot of things that could be better about it. Um, but it does, it, it, it is um, very easy for me to roll this this rocket around it. Um, I should probably explain a little bit more what's going on, but I should also like pay attention to the chat. So <laughs> let's take a look at what's going on in the chat. How is everyone tonight? Um, we've got plenty of testing to do, so if you have to go or do something else, or I mean, I'm I'm not really sure what people do at night. Um, I test rockets, but um, my neighbors, you know, they're not super fun. <laughs> All right. Um, who do we have in the chat here? Moonman22, we've got Richard, uh, Mr. Mansell RA, we have, oh, thank you, Jesse, Jesse Kowal, for the super chat, and Chris Kibb, hello. Um, who else is in here? We've got, oh, US Water Rockets, what's up? <laughs> um, 
Boy, you know what? Um, is slow mode on right now? I'm a little worried that I'm not going to be able to read any of these. Just stand by in one minute. Hey, also, by the way, does anyone know what's different about this test compared to the last reaction control test? If you look in the frame pretty closely, you should be able to figure it out. Um, there's something that's different, and it has to do, let's see if anyone's getting it. Looking good. Oh, Arsenio's here. Hi, Arsenio. Um, new body, no. Uh, high pressure, Jim, you're kind of close, but not really. If you've been, oh, here we go. Brayden got it. Brayden, by the way, congrats on your landing legs. I hope they're looking good. Um, but the, uh, what Brayden said was, it's from a big tank now. So this guy holds 3,000 PSI of air, um, and then we have a paintball, um, conversion. So this is a scuba tank. This is like a very proper aluminum scuba tank. Um, and it holds, sorry, I'm just like fixing a couple of things on the stream right now. It holds about 3,000 PSI of air. By the way, if you um, want to use metric, I understand, but I'm going to be using imperial because that's what always parts of spec did. You can get mad if you want. Um, and, oh my goodness, this is, we're almost at 400 viewers. <laughs> So the pressure comes out of this tank. Um, this tank has a ton of volume, which means we can run a bunch of these tests in rapid succession. It also makes the coolest noise when it fills up the tank here. So my finger is on the flight tank. Let me just make sure this looks good in, this, in the screen. This is our flight tank. This is the actual flight tank we're gonna use, although it is a slightly different regulator setup. We're still using that pretty inefficient regulator setup that I've mentioned a couple of times now. Um, and after coming out of this tank, it goes to an 800 PSI regulator right about there. I put a camera right here on the um, flight tank pressure so you can see it deplete as we do our test. I've also put a camera right here pointing at the vehicle so you can more, in a more detailed way, see it actually roll. Um, okay, it comes, out of, <laughs> it comes out of the regulator. It goes down through this. I've got this um, pressurization valve. I've had this, uh, I've used this in several tests now. Um, might be a little bit of residual pressure in here. No, there's no pressure. Um, I have this pressurization valve, which sends a bunch of air pressure back up into the rocket, um, and that's where it sort of sits against these valves. Now, here's what I'll tell you. If you're a proper engineer, just like cover your ears whenever we press for actually testing, um, there are a ton of leaks right now. It's okay because it's just a ground test and the leaks won't affect our runtime um, that much because we're not really idling with this on, but there are a ton of leaks, just so we know. The other thing is that um, the last time before I tested this stuff, wow, oh my gosh, 426 people. Maybe stop sharing the live stream. I am nervous. Um, when, uh, so, so the last time that I streamed live testing of the reaction control system, um, I had actually done testing before on the impulse of the thrusters. I had dialed in some of the PID gains just a little bit. That is not the case today. I have not tested roll thrusting on this yet. I've done just a little bit of test with, with low pressure air to make sure we have all of our plumbing inside the vehicle correct. Um, but we don't yet know the proper PID gains. Uh, we don't know the sensitivities for the control laws that we want yet. And so this means today's test style will be um, a little bit slower, or rather a little bit um, more experimental. So there will be more tests that look bad today. <laughs> OK, um, what else do we have going on? I've missed so much. <laughs> this is insane. Folks, I am, I am sorry for what I'm about to do, but I have to turn on slow-mo just a little bit more intensely with this number of viewers. If it goes down, um, <laughs> that would be OK. I'm going to set it to 30 seconds for now. I appreciate all the comments, but so far, um, so far I haven't been able to get to like any of them. Let me read off a couple more names, and then we will begin the test process. I know that's what all of you. Are. 450 people, please stop showing up. Please stop showing up. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna disappoint so many of you. Um, Joe Wakefield is here. Jennifer Troy, Eric, um, just every Eric, all of them. Um, we've got so many people. All right. <laughs> hey, Parker's here. What up, Parker? By the way, if any of you um, haven't seen it, there's an update just last posted last night on the BPS channel. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on this week. One of them is we are gonna 
Well, we're going to try to launch the Scout D1 rocket. Um, if you're interested in attending and you live in the Nashville area, we're doing a patron meetup. Um, and so that should be pretty fun. Although the weather is looking worse and worse, and I'm worried we might have to push it to early next week. We'll see. Um, OK, it's time. It's time to test, folks. So let's just get our bearings here. Once again, um, boy, there could have been a good pun, pun if I had um, a different type of test setup with the bearings. Anyway, we've got 3,000 PSI in the tank. This is enough for, I think, uh, I've used it a couple of times now, but um, I spent about three hours pressurizing it today. We should have enough for like 30 runs total before the tank is depleted. Um, or at least before we don't have a, a usable flight pressure in our tank here. We'll see though. Um, no promises. Uh oh, my chat has broken. Um, okay, here we go. So, uh, yes, thank you, uh, Moonman22, for the link. If you're interested in supporting the project, patreon.com slash bps.space. No, bps underscore space. Last thing, and then I promise we will start the testing. Last thing. The last thing is, where are they? Hold on. The last thing is in this box. This box is special. Or rather, its contents are special. Does anyone know? Does anybody know what this is? This is a wireless video transmitter that we are going to, in an ideal scenario, strap onto the side of the rocket and during the Scout D1 launch, either late this week or early next week, we will beam live. <laughs> I shouldn't make this promise because I haven't done it before. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to beam live video down from the rocket. Um, it's going to be crazy. So all of my tabs keep dying. I don't know what's going on. Stand by. <laughs> uh, is the stream quality still good for everyone? If it is, we will get to the testing. It looks good on the other computer, so we will get started here. My goodness, 511 people. Hello, everyone. Joe, why aren't you drinking the tea as usual? Oh, Callum, that's a, that's a good point. We will get the tea, but we must test first. There are so many people here, and I will disappoint so many, oh, so mostly all of them. Okay, here's the test procedure. Because all of the pressure is nominally held in this ground side tank, this, we'll call it the GST, the, the ground side tank, I don't know, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, it's going to go through this, uh, sometimes this is referred to as a whip or a fill whip or something like that. Uh, it's going to go through this hose into the flight tank. And so that's the start of our test process. We're gonna pressurize the flight tank and you'll hear some leaks begin to start because there's, there's even some leaks between the flight tank and the press valve. Again, it's okay for a test setup, it's not okay for flight. So, are you ready to hear a really cool noise? Let me turn off my air conditioning and you'll be able to hear it. it it's genuinely like, so cool. I also have to take it a little bit slow because the tank heats up. Um, if anyone is familiar with how PV equals NRT works, you'll understand why. Pressure and temperature are coupled real close, so I just want to take it slow and not stress this flight tank too much. Are we ready? Is everyone ready to test? In the chat, let me know if you are ready to pressurize the flight tank and this little dial will start to move up. It, it'll be pretty subtle because this is in kilopascal. Uh, sorry, not uh, KPSI. I wish it was kilopascals. All right, ready? Yeet! Hey folks, if you didn't see the Kerbal Space Program live stream, by the way, or any of the other recent live streams, the new meme for BPS is just the crab, the crab emoji. So, claws up, everybody. Claws up. And listen close. There we go. Excellent. So we're pressed. We're at about 2 kpsi now. The tank is nice and warm. All right. Wow, thank you, Chris Kidd. <laughs> oh, the claws up. All right, we're pressed. So the next step is I'm going to turn on this rocket. Oh my goodness, Douglas. You do like my videos, 3000. <laughs> All right. 
the vehicle is booting up, and we have extremely simple control gains right now. So this is just gonna hang here for a couple of seconds. Um, the control gains are like plus and minus 10 degrees. It's a, it's a straight up bang bang controller right now. There's no D gain. So I'm gonna press just a sec, just a t on a timer when it starts to. Here we go. So you can see it's, it's somewhat effective. It's not perfect. And I think if we have a smaller, smaller dead band, just let's, um, I should have probably demonstrated before this test. I'm going to go ahead and um, bleed a little bit. But um, before this test, what I should have also demonstrated is that you can actually roll the vehicle pretty freely. Actually, that's not, well, it's not, it's not quite true because we've got this tube coming out of the bottom. So it's, it's actually fairly hard to get it to have like very low resistance there. Um, the other thing that I'm slightly worried about with this test, right now at least, is that our thruster ports are pretty close to the center of the mass. Um, so that's the first test. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, it's, it's suboptimal. It is not perfect by any means. But what we get to do here during this live test is change things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up the computer one more time. Well more than once. I'm going to put the phone really close to it because the Bluetooth connectivity is pretty terrible. Okay, and then I'm going to just change some of these PID games so they're a little bit more sensitive. So here we go. Instead of 10 degrees, we'll make it like 4 degrees. Okay. So let's try this again. I'm going to boot up the computer again with these new games. And we'll see how it does. Once again, this is just a straight bang bang controller. There's no D gain in the little saturated and gated PID thing I have set up. Um, so let's give this a shot. It's just it's just going to be a slightly more aggressive than before. So the computer is booting up. We'll go ahead and uh, press the flight tank again. Listen close. Nice. All right, two kpsi, and then we'll press um, once those beeps stop. That means we're ready to actually test. There it is. Aha! That seems suboptimal. I think maybe, um, let me try something else. I'm wondering if the gyro values aren't dialed in very well. That was um, pretty low pressure, by the way. So let me think about this for a sec. We should perhaps let this thing just idle in a completely still position for a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically just let it hang out on the table for a second and boot it up. Um, does this make sense, what I'm doing? I, I'm sorry I haven't looked at the chat in, in a moment. I'm going to leave this here, and I'm going to calibrate all of the sensors on board. OK, yeah, our gyros look good. This should be fine. Let's try that test one more time. Um, although, let me just um, check the rule gain. Oh, it was way too strong. Sorry, folks. <laughs> that was way too strong. That was like an 0.6 degree and not, sorry. All right, we're almost there, I promise. I'm going to do 0.06. That's what I wanted. All right, are we ready for another test? Let's go ahead. I'll boot the vehicle up once more, and then we'll press. We don't need to press too much because we didn't drain that much of our working fluid last time. All right. We're definitely running out of air, um, slightly faster than anticipated too, because I used a lot before this stream. All right. Give it a sec. Here we go. All right, yeah. It's definitely working. 
It's a little too aggressive. We're running. That's pretty cool. the tank really quick, so I'm going to uh, close the press valve, uh, disconnect this, and bleed. Yeah, there's nothing in the system. Cool. All right. The tank is nice and cold. We've definitely been losing a lot of air. That makes sense. How is everyone? What have I missed so far? So Moonman22 asks, that's, that's just PI. Um, actually, so there's no I term in this. Right now, it is a straight bang-bang controller, which means it's just the P game. Um, if you're curious, I think the saturation, I think the P gain for that was 0.06, uh, like a KP of 0.06, and it's just directly referencing the z-axis orientation, which means, oh, and then there's a sat, there's like a saturation limit, or there's a, um, uh, it's like a high pass filter, but it's not about frequency, it's about just like the, the, the value of the number that is the output from the PID if the PID output is greater than 1, or I think in this case it may be 0.25 or something like that, if that value is greater than the limit, then it fires the thruster. So this is a, a truly like a straight um, uh, bang bang controller. Okay, what else? Let's get some more um, uh, questions here. Why don't you add a swivel to test roll? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, sorry. Um, Raise the mic volume. That is good feedback. Well, not that anything else is bad feedback, but let's, I'll, I'll just bump it up a couple of notches. Um, let's go up to like 75. How does this sound? Is this any louder for folks? Um, is this a little bit better? I can go more if you want. Um, <laughs> why is nothing on the whiteboard? Trista, you know, what a great observation. Chat. <laughs> Okay, let's play this game. What do I draw on the whiteboard? We need something on the whiteboard. Um, also, Douglas Scott, thank you for the super chat. He says, how about thrust ports not quite so close to the center? Douglas, that is exactly my thought as well. Um, I thought the roll thrust was going to be a lot higher and have uh, a much harder time um, controlling the vehicle, or at least a much easier time controlling the vehicle than it does right now. So these are actually in a suboptimal place. I'll have to um, uh, put these thrusters slightly further out from the CM, and that'll give us a lot more torque along the roll axis. Um, let's. How do I do this in a democratic way with like 500 people in the chat? Um, I don't know if a, let's do a straw poll, and I wonder if I can do a straw poll with user submitted things. Does anyone know? how to do, hmm, how, how do I do a straw poll where people can just all vote on user submitted things? How do I do this? Does anyone know? Draw the crab. All right, everyone wants the crab. I think it's, I think that's a good, um, that's a good idea. So let me just really quick bring up the emoji crab on my phone and I will draw it. This is becoming a drawing live stream. Don't worry, if you want more roll tests, we are definitely going to do more. Um, but it's just, you know, it's critical that I draw this crab right now. It's under the animal section. Aha! There it is. Okay, so, let me just screenshot it so I can zoom in. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I hope we lose thousands of viewers because of it. I know we only have hundreds, but I hope we lose thousands. Let me go in here. All right, I have the red marker. Let me just check my framing. <laughs> I think like this area, if I look at where my hand shows up on the stream, perfect. Okay, so this is the center of the crab. 
Now, the key, this is like Bob Ross. If I wanted this to be back, like Bob Ross, I should talk a little quieter. The key to drawing, folks, is that it's all about just being yourself. Yes, this works. Okay. And as I continue to talk, realizing I have, um, well, I don't have a whole lot to say here. So you just want to start with the outline. Oops. Just a happy accident here. We don't make mistakes because I'm Bob Ross, remember? All right. Now, how many legs does a crab have? Eight. Kind of like a spider, but better. We're going to come out like that and go down. And then we're going to come out like this and go down. And then here we go. We got one in the middle, just a little middle guy. And he's got a little, he's got a little angle to him. And then we got this boy who comes up. Oh, this is pretty bad. Um, okay, and then this is the important part. It's going to be hard for me to get this right. I hope. I wonder if anyone is just joining. Is like what is going on? Um, oh, <laughs> this is pretty bad. Okay, that's the that's going to be the claw, and I think there's like a little bump there. And then it's like a yeah, it's like one of these. This is so bad. <laughs> ah, all right, we're almost done. Then we'll do some more roll tests. Here we go. There's one there. There's one there. One here. We got this guy. And then this is, <laughs> this is what it looks like before I film most of my videos because I want to have something on the whiteboard, but I'm not good at drawing. OK. And then we got another one of these. And then I think he needs little eyes, right? So we'll, go, we'll do one of these. Oh, the eyes really make it. Yeah. I didn't think about this before, but the eyes are really what's important here. And then you also kind of want to go back to the. Yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll give it a little bit of texture, too. Nice. Wow, this is great. And then the eyes have to be dark so that it has a little bit more personality. So we give them two little beady eyes. And voila! <laughs> OK. Does anyone remember that this is a rocket channel? <laughs> We've lost about 100 viewers. So um, <laughs> hey, that's actually not so bad. Let's do some more roll testing, because that's garbage. Um, Thank you all for putting crabs in the chat. Claws up, everybody. Claws up. Should we go again? Um, I think maybe this time there's, OK. You know what I would like to do? Bear with me for just a moment. We're going to put a roll program on the vehicle. So I have the flight software up here in Arduino. I can't show it because there's some stuff that like um, legally is not super cool to show. Um, <laughs> in terms of US export control. That's always a confusing thing that's hard to talk about. But um, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to put another qualifier in here so that once we've been actually active for about um, like five, uh, like 10 seconds after. I know this is like ridiculous content. Um, OK, there we go. And TVC set point. Actually, this is the RCS set point. Um, if it's greater than, uh, OK, 90. We'll roll 90 degrees, everyone. Cool. And we'll roll 90 degrees after about nine seconds. So let me just compile this really quickly, grab a USB cable, and then we'll upload it to the flight computer. That's it. How to write a roll program with Joey B in about 45 seconds. All you have to do is put hard limits in there. <laughs> it is so confused. Ethan, I'm sorry you're confused, uh, Ethan. Uh, honestly, you know, we're, we're all a little confused. No one really knows what's going on in this stream right now. Okay, let's make sure I'm connected. 
Great. Upload. Should stop beeping in just a second. Do it. Nice. Okay, so we're uploading now. Um, and then once we have uploaded, it'll start again. There it is. Cool. All right. Our sketch is uploaded. Continuous beeping. Folks, if you are ready for another RCS test, claws up, please. Let me go ahead and change the gains on this one more time. I'm going to make them just, just ever so slightly more sensitive than last time. So it will be fairly aggressive. Still no D gain. It will still be a pure bang bang controller. So I'm going to bump it up to like 0.075. Great. Okay. So the new plan, by the way, um, let me make sure this is correct. So right hand rule, this is up, which means positive 90 degrees. It will start at this orientation, and then we will go ahead and roll 90. That's the plan. We're just going to roll 90, and then it's going to hold 90. That's, that's how this should work, in theory. Um, I'm a little worried about our air pressure, so we're just going to keep testing until we can't <laughs> realistically test that much anymore. I think as soon as we drop below, um, I mean, a certain value, it'll just be futile, and I'll have to go repressurize the tank, which takes several hours. All right, maybe we'll do a Kerbal Space Program stream after that. Here we go. So first, I'm going to boot up the computer. Thanks for putting claws up, by the way. If this test works well, you are contractually obligated to support the program on Patreon. It's just, it's, it's in the fine print. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I don't make the rules. All right, we're going to press the tank, the flight tank. Listen up. Pressed. OK. Ah, abort, abort. Hold on. Something's wrong. Okay, cool. The push fitting was not in all the way. Sorry, folks. There we go. We are going to start that again. The, uh, the push fitting was just not very secure. <laughs> all right, here we go. Just below 2K PSI. We're going to press in just a moment here. And go. And it's going to roll. There it is. Okay, hold on. Okay. That did not work that well. That's okay. This is a testing stream. The goal is just to test. So it's okay that it didn't work well because it's, that's, that's what it is. Let me just reseat this cable so there's a little bit less resistance on the roll axis. And then once we do that, it'll be much easier for the vehicle to properly get to that uh, attitude that it needs to get to. So let's go ahead and reboot the computer and just try it again. Um, yeah. I'm also going to start it off just a little bit um, off nominal, and that should help as well. Oops. Uh oh. Hold on. It detected launch, which is not correct. Let's pressurize the flight tank. Excellent. And boot up the flight computer. Yeah, that, someone just mentioned. Um, Engineer at, said this hose is acting like a torque arm, and the engineer is correct. That's what's going on for the most part. So I'm just holding the rocket on my knee. It doesn't roll too much. It's going to hold this orientation first, and then it's going to roll that positive 90 degrees. Give it a sec. Okay, press. So it's holding this. Now it's going to roll. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so that would have been the roll, but we ran out of pressure. I think we should try this test one more time. Um, here's the problem. We're starting to really run out of pressure. I could run the compressor a couple of times, but it's, it's kind of late here. Let me think about how we can do this. We could run directly from this tank. Um, let's give that a shot. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. Yeah, it's losing pressure too quick from the flight tank because the problem is we're actually not going all the way up to 3k psi. The tank, I should, I should have bought a, a higher pressure scuba tank, but uh, the tank can only bring us to about 2k psi. Let's try this test one more time. I'm going to roll just a little bit. The other thing that could solve our problem is a smoother roll program. Right now it is, it is pure 0 to 90 in a, like less than a millisecond. And that's problematic because we, we really end up running out of pressure. So I'm also going to leave um, this tank open so that we can run directly from the big tank. Here we go. Give it a sec. OK. Lessons learned here. Let me uh, turn off the flight computer so it doesn't waste power on those solenoids. What have we learned so far? What we've learned is that, yeah, my neighbors do hate me. Uh, no, they don't. I actually, I talk to them before each time I do these tests, and they're like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so what we've learned so far is these roll thrusters, you can see right, let me just make sure that shows up well for the camera. So um, I'm going to put two fingers right under where the roll thrusters are for positive and negative. There are two on each side. Um, and the problem that I'm running into is that these, both of these thrusters, oh, you know, there's a way that we can solve this. There's a dumb way that we could solve this in its current state. I'm going to think about that for a sec. We, we might be able to solve it right now in just a dumb way, but we'll, we'll see first. What's going on is that these, these need to be further away from the center of mass in order to have more effectiveness and a larger torque arm. Right now they are very, very close. And I did that. I made that uh, active design decision because I was pretty sure they would be overpowered. So I wanted to restrict their power on the vehicle. However, it seems to be, it, it seems that I've, I've gone a little bit too far. Let me also, let me try one other thing. I'm just gonna look in a, a box over here. I think I have one of the older thruster ports. Stand by. So we could try this too. This is a, um, you can see the, the difference between these two items right here in this camera. Um, this set of thruster ports is further apart than um, the current setup. Not by too much, but it is further apart. Um, and it would make a difference. Not sure if we should try that yet. Also, yeah, okay, there are a couple of ways that we could fix this. Is anyone, <laughs> there's 400 people now. Um, so listen, I'm totally willing to spend the time to solve this right now, but it is going to take perhaps, uh, it probably won't take that long. Should we just do it? Should we try to solve it by um, replacing this nose cone with a slightly uh, further apart quartz? May also be like one or like five to ten minutes of programming involved too, just so we can uh, double up on valves. And at that point, we should have a tremendous amount of control authority. Um, let's give this a shot. We have four sets of valves right now. I'm actually using one of the x-axis valves to control the roll, um, just to keep things simple. So, okay, see, people seem to, to want this. I don't know why anyone would say no, but it seems like almost everyone would say yes. So let's just walk through. I'm sorry the camera setup isn't really perfect for um, this, wh what I'm about to do, um, but it, maybe I can take some questions while I'm doing this and uh, make things a little bit more exciting. So 
I'm going to just disconnect everything. We're going to take the nose cone off. You'll also notice the nose cone has received just a, a bit of damage here. Um, that was during assembly when my drill slipped and went through the nose cone. That's pretty easily fixable. Um, all right. Can you repressurize the tank while you do it? Austin, that's a good question, but the answer is no. So I spent three, three hours. If anyone uh, saw the older live stream too with the uh, reaction control testing, you'll know just how loud that compressor is. I spent three hours in the middle of the day pressurizing up this tank, and uh, I think I'm not going to put my neighbors through that uh, at what is currently 8.48 p.m. Um, I also think at some point I'll probably just get this stuff spilled up at a scuba shop. And then we can, we can go for a little bit longer, uh, a little bit easier. Okay, so the current setup has a split valve deal. There's one set of, yeah, okay. This gets back to the mass flow rate problem with these tiny valves. All right, I think I know how we can fix this. The first thing that I want to do is I want to think really carefully about what has to go where. <laughs> I know this, is, this may not make a lot of sense right now. Uh, we have 420 viewers, nice. Um, I know this might not make a lot of sense right now, but let's just give it a shot. So one, two, one, it's going to go there. It's going to sit nicely in there, and then two, it's going to go in the opposite direction of roll thrusting. And then I'm going to double up these valves. Yeah, okay, this is going to work. It's going to be weird, but it's going to work. One, two. This, honestly, so this approach will probably yield too much power. I mean, never too much power, but like, probably too much power. Now, let me get some pliers too, hold on. I'm going to use a single valve per port now instead of one valve per two ports. Um, and that is why I will have to edit some stuff in the programming as well. Um, oh boy, hold on. Stand by. Uh, might need to do some tricky stuff because I cut these really weirdly. Ah, hold on, folks. All right. You said you wanted this. This is what people said they wanted. So this is what engineering looks like. It's just me going, ah, the whole time. We need to get slightly cleaner cuts on these tubes, and then we will use the splitters, because they're already set up, and I will plug them. That's how this will work. Stand by. Is everyone following along? Everyone can perfectly understand what I'm talking about when I use really obscure terms and things like that. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Where did I put my Teflon tape? Okay, we have this. We need an Allen wrench. And this is the Imperial set because why use the United States like this? Everyone else uses metric. <laughs> Should we do a live stream where I just complain about measurement systems? <laughs> this is really good toned down engineering speak. Elon Musk building first Falcon rocket, 2005, colorized. All right, let me just try to give a, a just a quick overview of what is going on. Um, I have these little fittings here, and they are going to act, it's so dumb, but they're going to act as extensions. Um, really, like, Suboptimal. It is the it is a uh, the epitome of suboptimal right now. We're using splitters as fittings or as extensions to single uh, bits of tube because I cut my other tubes too short. <laughs> oh boy! What's everyone else doing? What else is going on in the world today? Anyone watch the Apple event? Is anyone ready to pay the uh, 
what is it? It's like a thousand dollars for the uh, the stand for that screen. Why do people tune into these? I am not sure. I do not understand. Okay. The stream is the quality of the stream is degrading as I Teflon tape these little tiny quarter inch plugs that are going to help us use these fittings. Um, the Teflon tape helps prevent leaks too. So it's quite helpful. It's just also a little bit tedious, especially when you do a lot of valves at once. Okay, now it's going in here. I'm going to plug up this hole. You said you wanted this. People said they wanted it, so. Apple cheese grater, says Jonathan. Correct. All right, we're down to 370 viewers. We losing them. <laughs> That is probably sufficient. Cool. And then we'll do this one here. I have to plug this fitting as well. Nice and smooth. Feels good. Feels like a good solid seal. Okay, now this goes on here, and we kind of just cross our fingers that it works, um, you know, as you do. That looks, you just need cleaner cuts on this one. Okay, now I plug this fitting in here. And I plug this fitting in here. And then we will screw it all into the rocket and solve it with software because I don't have these tubes labeled anymore. So I don't know what is positive and negative on each axis. Why am I like this? Okay. First, I guess we can just change it in the direction. That's fine. We're just going to guess. And I want everyone to cross their fingers in the chat so that I can get this right on like the first try. There's a, there's a, uh, I think statistically speaking, Although I'm not thinking about the summing of it, but I believe there's a 75% chance that I will get it wrong. I think that's how it works. Okay, one, two, rest reports one and two, and then three, and yeah, this is not going to work. These are going to get like kinked. Um, three, Suppose, because they're all individual valves. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Okay, let's try this. Let's cut it even shorter. This is what engineering looks like, everyone. Or at least in the early process, early stages of projects. Okay, there's two. Nice. Okay, now we can have these sort of slide down at the airframe a little bit more, um, not cause too much trouble. Actually, what I might want to do is start to wrap this around so we can more smoothly deal with this tubing. Um, okay, and then we do one and two. Ah, I'm almost there. One in this port. Okay. Final two. Bring it home, Joey B. Do it for the Kerbals that you killed like three nights ago. Aha! I got it. All right. Now we just have to make sure, we just have to like hope that I did it right. Um, or at least close enough to where I can fix it in software by just changing what valve fires when. It should be okay. <laughs> All right. Boy, this is uh, I have never looked at a chat less in any live stream. I'm so sorry, folks. We, will, we can do some questions after for sure. Um, but for now, my goal is just to get a decent working test result. Oops. 
to hit a roadblock there. Okay, great. We have two more screws to place. So once again, this should be um, far more power than last time. We should have much more control authority, which works well because we're running out of air pressure. This is also, this is a, a um, prime example of why I did not want to use CO2 um, for this system because running through this much CO2 and dealing with getting it filled is, I think, I think would get expensive over time. So the last thing that I need to do here, I guess suppose I should just start testing. Welcome to the um, Joey B is all over the place live stream. Thanks for joining. Today, we're going to see if this works. And these rubber bands aren't covering the roll ports, so we should, in theory, be able to roll a bunch. Nice. OK. We're only going to pressurize just a tiny amount here. We'll find the port. There it is. Okay. Should we give it a shot? RCS is blue tube. Thank you, Parker. That is correct. Should we answer some questions or should we test? What does the chat want? Answer questions or test? What would you rather have happen? I am thirsty. And just in the traditional sense. Okay, test. Everyone's, everyone wants test. <laughs> All right. So let's go for the test here. Um, mostly what I am curious about. Oh, we already need to do more software. So mostly what I've been curious about here. I think let's just start with this. We're going to start really simple. I'm sorry this doesn't make a ton of sense right now. I'm going to pressurize for flight and boot up the computer. Just want a little bit of air because I don't want to run out of it too much. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, no, that's okay. Really what I want is just to see which thrusters are working and which are not. It's going to be a no from me, dog. Hold on. I'm going to reboot and replug in. That fell out. OK. The, uh, <laughs> we, lost a, we lost a tube there. But we should be all set now. So once again, I believe we are looking at these two thrusters. Okay, press. Right, so. Okay, great. Those are in the correct order. Now we need to add the plus and minus y. So, let me just get a, hold on. Almost there. We need to check these thrusters now with the green mark on them. And I'm just going to let this guy hang out. And I'm going to add, sorry, this is going to be a slightly boring part here. But what I am doing is adding valves to, OK, XP, XM, YP, and YM. YP and YM should be correct. <sighs> XP, XM, YM. And this is going to, um, hold on, YP. YM low and YP low. OK, so I'm just changing um, our setup to make sure that our valves can actually work. Um, and then we will <laughs> destructive. We will do some live testing. Oops, that's probably actually quite a bit. We're going to do some live testing to see which valves, if we got it right or if we have to flip them. So, uploading now, and stop beeping.
<laughs> nice. All right. We're going to see if we got this to work. Oh, Joe, you sweet summer child. He high key looks like Elon Musk. Hey, can I? Okay, hold on. Let's just test this first to see if I got it right. So what we are looking for is um, opposing valves that fire in the correct way. It's gonna, it's gonna start up the flight sequence in just a second here. Something's wrong. I wonder what is wrong. There's a big leak. There's a big leak somewhere. If I turn this off. Okay. It's in. Oh no, are the Y valves backwards? That can't be right. Hold on. Oh, hold on. XP, YP, high. High. And the Y valves should be, should not even fire at all. High, high if it's one. High, high if it's that. XP, XM, YM, YP. That's all of them. Okay, let's try this one more time. Let me re-upload, and we'll see if it's a valve error, because I think it might be. Uh, it, it could be a plumbing error, and that would be pretty bad, but let's just give this a shot first. We're connected, and now I am uploading. <laughs> oh, why valves? Oh, how the turntables. Wow, clap it up for Miles for putting in the office quote. That's, I love that. Uploading and cool. We in business. So this, let me reboot one more time and just listen for any clicking. So nothing's firing. We're going to let things stay very, very still. And then only when it is time to fire will we slightly pressurize. Just going to go up to 1 kpsi. Maybe a little. Okay. Press. Okay, something's wrong, right? And I think it has to do with a very big leak in the system somewhere. Let me get a flashlight here. There's a very big leak. No, there's not. There can't be a big leak because when the, when the computer is off, no, it is a big leak. Do I see anything that looks bad. Not really. Um, hold on. Let me pressurize one more time. This is insane. Thank you all for joining the Joey B stream where I try to point a flashlight at the same time and look up a tube. Okay. I see problems in the form of slightly kinked tubes. Yeah. All right. Boys and gals, we're not done yet. I'm not giving up. What I am doing, however, is I'm going to fix the heck out of these valves and this plumbing, and it's going to require some serious lamp, serious desk lamp action. I want a lot of light in this tube. So, the problem, <laughs> why do people tune into this? The problem here 
is that there's a kinked tube. Oh, this is going to be so hard to fix without like disassembling everything. Maybe that helps. Okay, if I push it down and like unkink the tube, does that help? Uh, let's press again. And. Okay, hold on, that's not good. There, how's that? Oh, I got it! That's much better. That is an acceptable amount of leak. It's not good, but it's an acceptable amount. <sighs> Welcome to Joey B. Sticks His Hand in the Tube. Thank you all for joining. Watch live on the internet in 1080p as Joe Barnard loses his mind <laughs> over small leaks in a pressurized air system. Tune in later this week where Joe attempts to live stream from a field with very little cell phone coverage. All right. I'm feeling good about this now. Let's give it another shot. Booting up. Okay, we're booting up. I'm gonna press again. Oh, geez, we're only at 1.5K. We're really running out of fuel, or of working fluid at least. There it is. Okay. So, we're so close, it's almost there. The orientation is correct. I can feel the correct valves fire. That is what I wanted. The problem is that there's no air coming out of one of them. And I just get the vibe that like it's gonna... Mm, I'm wondering if... Okay, let's play this game. The game is called Let's play another game, and it's called Does That Valve Actuate? <laughs> uh, I need the sketch called Relay Valves. What we're doing now is we're validating, I think one of the y-axis valves may be acting up because we didn't get thrust on just one of the ports. So if I go into the sketch that just cycles through all the valves, what we can do is upload that sketch and Okay, 20 is too fast. We need like, uh, uh, we need 500 and 500. Psh, psh. Yeah, okay, cool. That's what I want. 500, we're gonna compile, we're gonna plug it in, and then we're gonna test these valves. <laughs> I am surprised that people are still here. Like, I do appreciate it. I just, it is surprising to me. Uploading. Wow, that was very fast. This is a small sketch. So it's just gonna cycle through. They all work. Um, I also want to not cap it off here. So we're just gonna let it roll. Let me upload one more time. And then we'll do a slight press. Something's wrong. Am I uploading? Oh, I didn't have enough power. Okay. Here we go. Press. Aha! Hear this? That one's bad. So there's one valve in there that just does not have the force it needs because there's some block in air pressure where the valve is not properly actuating 
or there's some problem. I'll do it one more time, and you can pretty clearly pick it out which valve it is in the cycle. Here it comes. That's it. Right, so let me check one more time to see which valve is the problem. Let me press a little bit. That one. Okay. So I'm going to mark that. That's the one with the green marker is wrong. So that one. Ooh. All right. We're getting there, folks. We're making progress. Do you think that is the one with the kink in it? Because that would make a lot of sense. It does have a slight kink in there. It's hard to tell. It's just very hard to tell with this stuff. If I push it up, it will solve it, right? If I push the manifold up, it will kind of absolve some of that kink. But it could also be in the top, right? I feel like the kink would also Okay. Oh. Should we play? Okay, hold on. Which one is it? There's. It's whatever goes there. All right. Hold on. I have an idea. Where's my screwdriver? I'm not sure where I put it. Here it is. Let's just go digging around in this mess. Half of the problem with this project, actually, 90% of the problem with this project is getting valves to properly actuate and dealing with all of the plumbing inside of this tiny, tiny tube. When people say, hey, Joe, you should build a liquid engine, the problem isn't with the hard parts of a liquid engine. like. It's just with plumbing is a nightmare. Oh boy. That seemed bad, what just happened. That didn't feel good. It felt like we just disconnected. Well, we might find out that... <laughs> we might find out more things about a rocket today. Let's try this. Nope. Okay, cool. So there's still a kink in there. So uh, let's try this. Let's go upside down and let me move around the kinked part at the bottom. Here we go. issue inside the vehicle, which is problematic. Oh, also we have like misalignment here, but we have a plumbing issue inside the vehicle. Ah, uh, it's probably going to be on the y-axis, and the way I structured this is x and y, which means our problem is in like the middle of the rocket. Oof. Let me think about this a little bit. It's hard to, it's just, you can't really see anything in here. Um, this is very interesting because I didn't have this before. The other thing that is um, silly about this is there's a, <laughs> there is a, uh, a pressure gauge inside here too that no one will ever see because it's inside of a tube. All right, I think, uh, 
I think that honestly might be it for the role testing. I know that, that might be a little anticlimactic, but the problem is taking apart this vehicle takes like a solid hour, and then putting it back together takes like another solid hour. Um, this is actually the same, like this, this, this vehicle has been assembled and like together for uh, about a month and a half now, maybe two months. No, 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 it must, must be like a month and a half. And so, um, because it's been assembled for so long, it's just been sort of sitting in here. So any, um, any like time that the vehicle has been shaken around or like moved around or tugged on one of these little um, like pneumatic tubes inside of here, the, like the, the stresses and like, it just has been around for a long time and it's time to take all of this stuff out and reintegrate it um, and probably do some more, not destructive, but permanent um, tubing inside there, which means we should focus on actually using like uh, Loctite and more permanent seals. Does that make sense to everyone? So that's kind of what's going on. That's like the current situation. We can play the valve song again. Do you want to play the valve song? <laughs> Let's play the valve song. I'm not done by streaming, by the way. This is far from over. Let's play the valve song. The song of my people. Ah. It's loud. Bring it all the way down to 20 NMS. Upload. The song of my people.
we pressurize, we find that there are only three that are actually thrusting, right? Should we sing it again? I feel like I should sing it again. some. We only had a couple of tests that, by the way, don't leave. This, the stream isn't over. But um, we only had a couple of tests that we got to do today and we saw that the effectiveness of these very close together roll thrusters is just not that good. So I think in the next design revision, what I will do is I will move these roll thrusters further out um, so we have more control authority over the vehicle um, and that way we don't have to double up on valves and double up on what is essentially failure points. Because if one of those valves fails, the vehicle does not roll. It just goes in a sort of weird diagonal direction. And that's not good. Um, <laughs> ready for the second movement, Joe. Bring it on. All right. So yeah, the stream is, <laughs> the stream is not stopping. Um, but I don't know what to do. What should I do on the rest of the stream? I could stream Kerbal Space Program. Kind of interested in doing that. I've been. Ever since I played it like several days ago on the other channel, I've been hankering to not kill Kerbals and try a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not going to play the Crab Rave. I'll get copyright, whatever. This video, the video will get claimed. What I am going to do, please put your suggestions in the comments. I will be reading them, but I'm about to go make some tea and go to the bathroom. I know everyone loves the bathroom breaks. Wow, people think that I should do Kerbal really hard. That is insane. Okay, hold on. Let's do a straw poll. What should Joey B do? KSP, literally anything else. Please, just anything else. Okay, I'm gonna make a straw poll. <laughs> I'm gonna create the poll. And I'm going to go on to an intermission. Oh, sign into chat. Ah, oh, do I have to sign in? What? That's garbage. Hold on. Hold on, everyone. Stand by. I'm about to post, post a, straw, um, a straw poll in the chat. And uh, please vote in the straw poll. Your vote counts. And I want you to vote because I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to spam it in the chat. Here we go. Go vote in the straw poll. I'm allowed to spam my own chat. Go vote in the straw poll. I will respect the results of the poll. If it's not KSP, we will figure out something else. And if it is KSP, then that's what we'll do. That's kind of how voting works. All right, here we go. Going to an intermission. I'll be back soon. If you leave, I promise you will regret it for the rest of your life. Your entire life. Just you'll regret leaving in this instance during the stream right now. Don't go away. Why, oh why, is the pressure tank still in the intermission thing? What is that? Who does this? Hold on. <laughs> uh, much better. Okay, going back to an intermission, do not go away.
What just happened? What just happened? Something happened. Sorry, everyone. One minute. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Hold on. Don't leave. Don't leave. Is Am I back? Can everyone hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, okay, cool. I hope I didn't lose... Okay, I'm back. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I do not know what happened. Let me just uh, get rid of some of these cameras here. <laughs> we don't need uh, this view right here. Oh, geez. Look, this is a mess. Here's what I wanted to do, everyone. I wanted to take a live look. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, geez. Hold on. Let me do this. Grab this guy over here. What I wanted to do is take a live look. <laughs> is take a live look at the results of the poll. I have not voted. I have not voted. So we have to take a look at the results of the poll. I have prepared for what I believe the results will be, but um, I will respect the results of the poll. This is such a mess. Thank you for dealing with this. <laughs> Here we go. And let's look at the results. It is mostly KSP. I think some of these votes may be facetious or jokey. So I will respect the results of the poll. Here is what we are going to do. I have to go offline just a little bit to change my stream key, and then I'm going to stream the KSP. I don't want to put KSP on the BPS channel. I'd rather have that be completely real engineering. Um, not that KSP isn't real engineering, but you know what I mean. I want it to be physical testing like this. We're gonna close out this stream. I'm gonna move over to my other channel, which someone can link in the description that will know. I can link in the description or uh, someone can just put it in the thing. Let me switch to just the webcam view. And, uh, oh my gosh, this is such a mess. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and just pop that link in the chat so everyone knows what's going on. This is a mess, this is a mess. Why, why have I done this? This is a mess. Uh, here we go, in the chat. That should be the link where we are going. Um, <laughs> I says, why are you making me change channels? It's not that much work, man, you click a link. I wanna keep things separate uh, between the two channels. If you don't wanna watch the Kerbal Space Program, that's all right. Thank you for joining the Reaction Control live stream. But now we're gonna go to um, app, after hours, Joey B. Quality over quantity, Joe. Quality over quantity. Douglas, can you elaborate? Someone said that in the last, in an earlier stream, and I gave them a pretty flippant response. Um, but that's what I want to focus on here is quality and things that are directly related to BPS, which is why I am switching channels. Um, so, anyway, I'm going over to the other channel. If you want to join, you can. I'll be there in just about five minutes, just so I can switch the stream key um, for OBS. And yeah, that's right. So Josh has it. Josh Goldberger says, <laughs> um, this channel is more for serious testing, which is true, even though most of my testing involved me singing along to the sound of solenoids actuating. All right, so here we go. I'm heading over to my other channel. I'll see you all there, or some of you, in maybe about five minutes. Should be around then. I'm gonna get some tea too, and, and we'll get all prepped for KSP. Thank you for joining. If you're leaving, it's it's much appreciated. Thanks for joining and stay tuned. I'm gonna try really hard either later this week um, or early next week, depending on the weather, to actually get um, the Scout D1 launch on that Aerotech H13 launched uh, to, get, to get that whole launch live streamed. So here we go. <laughs> I'm going over to the other channel. I'm not gonna keep talking. I'm gonna do a quick outro and I'll see you all in just a minute. Don't go away. <laughs> 